Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. And uh, to our distinguished panelists, uh, welcome to the committee. Mr. Chairman, as you noted, this hearing is a direct result of the November 2012 plebiscite that was held in Puerto Rico on their political status. It's an issue that uh, I have taken an interest in and perhaps a, feel a sense of kinship as I believe I'm the only sitting United States uh, senator who was actually born in a territory. So that dates me a little bit, but I'm okay with birthdays. It's better than the alternative. It's long been my position that the process for determining Puerto Rico's preferred political status should come from Puerto Rico and not from Washington, D.C., just as the residents of Alaska and Hawaii did as the last two states that were admitted to the Union. Now that the plebiscite has been held, it's clear to me that a majority of Puerto Ricans do not favor the current territorial status as evidenced by the first question on the ballot. The result of the second question, however, is not as clear to me, nor is it certain that any of the valid status options would receive a majority vote. And when I use the term valid status options, I'm referring to the continuation of the current Commonwealth status, statehood, independence, and free association similar to what the United States has with the Marshall Islands, Micronesia, and Palau. Back in 2010, I joined with our former chairman, Senator Bingaman, in outlining these options to the president as the only four status options available for Puerto Rico's future relations with the United States. It was my preference leading up to the November 2012 plebiscite that the ballot have one question with each of the four options listed. Puerto Rican government, however, chose to go with the two-question ballot and as a supporter of the process being driven by Puerto Rico, I respect that decision. But <clears throat> what we learned is that the current status does not have majority support. Beyond that, uh, I don't believe that we can draw any definitive conclusions about the plebiscite results. The President's FY14 budget request included $2.5 million for another plebiscite in Puerto Rico, uh, but even if a new plebiscite is held, it is the Puerto Rican legislature that will determine how that ballot will appear. And if that path is chosen, I would encourage a format that is fair to all valid options. I look forward to uh, hearing from the, the representatives that we have here this morning. Again, a very distinguished panel on a very important issue to the people of Puerto Rico. 